This is not loading. This is not working. What is this? This takes hell of a lot of time to load. I don't know why. Hey dude, what's up? Yo man, how's it? I mean, luckily you are here. This, I really don't know this internet. Uh -huh. It's a damn thing, it doesn't work. I really don't know why, because I have enough signals. See, for you. Two, three, zero, four, G. G? What? Two, three, G? Four, G? What? I really don't know, Raji. It's slow. It's slow. It's slow. Can you make it faster? Let me check. Aha! You are using GPRS. It's a 2G technology. GPRS? Yeah. I really don't know about that. Rajiv, you need to tell me about this. You need to tell me about this. Can you make it faster for me? I'm not a genie to make it faster, but you'll need third matters. It will make it faster. Mm. Huh. I set it to 4G. My god, now it's loading fine. Rajiv, you need to tell me about this. I really don't know what G is. Please. Sure, I will. Smartphone has now become a commodity in our day to day lives. Can you imagine how many times do we look at the screens of the smart devices within a day? Though we look at it many times, do we care about the small numbers or letters which are displayed next to the signal bars? In fact, it gives an idea on the technology which will be used when we use the internet. In other words, we can call it the mobile generation. This technology or the generation has a direct relationship with the bandwidth allocation for data. The higher the generation, the higher the allocated bandwidth is. Now let's look at what are the mobile generations which we had so far. As you can see here, there has been a leap in almost every 10 years. In each generation, we see some new features as well as significant improvements to the drawbacks we have seen in their predecessors. Let's see what are the key highlights of each generation. In the first generation, the main focus was on the analog voice and the mobility. Thus, the mobility was not smooth compared to what we experience at the moment. There wasn't a global standardization body at that time. Therefore, some countries and several telecommunication operators developed their own local standards. As a result, the workability of a particular mobile phone in two different countries was not guaranteed. For an example, a mobile phone which was used in America could not be used in most of the European and Asian countries. When it comes to the second generation of networks, analog voice was replaced by the digital voice. Text messaging was also introduced and when this generation matured, the equipment gradually started to support the internet surfing functionality as well. The third generation focused more on mobile broadband and making video calls. By this time, digital voice and text messaging have already become basic services. I think I don't need to say much about fourth generation networks as currently it has become a part of your lifestyle. One thing I would like to highlight is that with the implementation of the 4G networks, the mobile data usage has been increased extensively as it supported the HD streaming or in other words high definition streaming as well as the ultra broadband internet access.
5G will mainly focusing on three areas, namely enhanced mobile broadband, ultra reliable low latency communication, and massive machine type communication. We will discuss these terms and their functionality in a future video. Another noticeable fact is the evolution of the mobile equipment over the years. From generation to generation, we have observed multiple changes, especially to deliver the special features emphasized in each generation. When it comes to 5G, apart from the traditional mobile devices, there will be a large number of things which uses the 5G network to communicate with each other or the central servers with or without the human intervention. Finally, let's see what these letters and numbers next to signal bars stand for. G stands for GPRS or in other words, General Packet Radio Services. It is one of the frontiers of the evolution of mobile data communication towards what we use today. It is a 2G technology and in most of the cases we refer it as 2.5G. E refers to edge, that is enhanced data rates for GSM evolution. It is also known as enhanced GPRS or eGPRS. If you search in the internet or any other printed material, you might find it as either 2.75G or 2.9G. Even though it is a bit faster than GPRS, it will not fulfill the bandwidth requirement of modern day applications. 3G is the basic third generation technology and the data rates would be almost same as Edge. That is a theoretical maximum of 384 kilobits per second. With the introduction of HSPA, that is high speed packet access, which is an amalgamation of two mobile protocols, high speed downlink packet access and high speed uplink packet access that extends and improves the performance of existing 3G mobile telecommunication networks using the W3DMA technology. It is also known as 3.5G which provides a maximum data rate of 7.2 megabits per second on downlink and 1.5 megabits per second on uplink. HSPA Plus, an improved version of HSPA, considered as the 3.75G, which can yield up to 21 megabits per second on downlink. There is another variant known as the DC HSPA Plus or the dual carrier HSPA Plus, which accommodates two separate frequency carriers so that theoretically it can support up to 42 megabits per second on downlink. 4G or the LTE is one of the commonly used access technologies right now. This is supplemented by the extensive usage of smartphones and also the applications which require higher bandwidth. Both LTE and LTE Advanced are considered as 4G technologies which support data rates in the range of hundreds of megabits per second. The LTE Advanced Pro is a pre-5G technology and it is also called as the 4.5G. Theoretically, it can go up to 1 gigabits per second in the downstream. 5G is yet to be deployed commercially and we will hear more about it in next few years. One thing I want to emphasize is that the theoretical data rates may not be achievable or experienced practically due to multiple factors such as the load on the network, interferences, geographical conditions, environmental factors, device limitations, and so on. Now I know all about 4G and 3D. Thanks, Rajiv. See you. See you, Liz. In coming videos, it is all about 5G and beyond.